with Wendy. Um, only if the Eiffel Tower was behind you would things be fitting. <laughs> okay, so we're going to hit through a couple storylines here, and we start with the game of the night. The Warriors in Boston taking on the Celtics. Many wondering if uh, Jason Tatum would go off in a revenge for Steve Kerr, giving him limited minutes during the Olympics. Kerr got his booze. Tatum had 32, but the Warriors were a lot to handle for the Jalen Brownless Celtics. Buddy Heal, was this a statement game? Well, what do you think? I mean, it's just a statement. If we don't win this game, everybody's like, oh, they didn't play nobody. You know, so so you got to come make a statement, right? And on the road, so, uh, you know, that's how, that's how the basketball world talks. You know, if you they say we haven't played nobody yet, so we battle-tested and uh, got to see if it's real. All right, Wendy, how good are these Warriors? So they have this gauntlet that they're running right now. Boston last night, Cleveland, 9-0 and Cleveland Cavs tomorrow night, and then they play in Oklahoma City. And they were, they did have a little bit of a soft schedule, like Buddy Hill was saying. But you know what's ironic about this is Kerr is getting booed because of what happened in the Olympics. But the way Steve Kerr is playing with the Warriors right now is a very Olympic style game plan. Mm. In the Olympics, and Mike Shashevsky really pioneered this when he was the coach, what they would do is the U.S. has so much more depth than everybody. So he would play five guys. He would tell those guys to go out there and run around like crazy and so you're exhausted on defense, and then he would bring five new guys in. And the idea is you're taking five All-Stars out and putting five All-Stars in, and it's won the U.S. five straight gold medals. That's what Steve Kerr did largely in the Olympics in Paris. It was five and five, though there were ten, and Tatum was the 11th guy against Serbia, but whatever. What he's using now is he's using 12 or 13 players, and he's playing them Olympic style. He's playing like seven of them, like between 13 and 20 minutes. They're going out there. They're exhausting themselves on defense, and then he's doing mass subbing. And then he's letting Draymond Green and Steph Curry do the heavy lifting uh, at each end of the court. But it's working. If you watch the way the Warriors play, they play high-pressure defense. They're double-teaming like crazy. Now, if you're a Celtics fan, of course I need to point out, Jalen Brown did not play last night. Yeah. Chris Porzingis didn't play. And it's easier to double-team when you're missing two dynamic players like that. But they're double-teaming. The players get exhausted, out comes two, two, two more come in, and they've got the number two defense in the league so far. And if you can limit the Boston Celtics, who have an absolutely dynamic offense, you can do special stuff. Absolutely. And when you talk about what Wendy's saying, when you're able to blitz the way they did in that first half against the Boston Celtics, you like that right there. Yeah, blitz, that's what they call it. I feel like I'm saying that to J.J. Reddick. Uh, don't, don't go that far. <laughs> uh, when you're able to do that and you have so many guys that can play, you can sub those guys out and move them around. And, yes, the Celtics got going in the third quarter and just started knocking down threes. But I think the, the cool part about it is when you have experience like you have in a Steph Curry and you have in a Draymond Green, you got to get to the fourth quarter. Once you get to the fourth quarter and you get to winning time, you put the ball in those guys' hands and allow them to do their thing. But the fun thing for this team is when you talk about Curry playing multiple guys, the only way you can do that is guys have to step up and make plays and earn those minutes. Guys like Jonathan Kaminga coming off the bench playing well. Guy like Buddy Hill you bring over there, and he's making the big three at the end of the game to secure it. Those are the moments in the players that are stepping up that allows him to play that rotation. Wendy, I have a question for you, just as like an, yeah. uh, an observer, okay? I watched this game a little bit last night. Do they have enough size? Because I think, I, again, just being a fan mm. of the NBA with Denver, and do they have enough size? Because I didn't see a lot on the court. That is a question, and one of the things that's also happened this year is Kevon Looney, who frankly last year, he was their center for all their championships. He sort of played a bit role with Andrew Bogut for a while. Looney, frankly, was just not good last year, and people were wondering, is Looney past his prime? Looney has been awesome. Looney had several big-time putbacks last night as well. So, it, yeah, I do think it's a concern on the whole, but if this Kevon Looney lasts, they, they might be able to, to triage it. Also going to say... Now, I, I, they may not want to do anything with this roster because it's so good, but the Warriors are the biggest candidate in my mind to make a big trade. Mm. They tried to trade for LeBron James last trade deadline. I know it was mm -hmm. an amazing, was one of the most amazing stories that Woj and Ramona reported all last year was that that trade talks went down. Okay, that didn't happen. Then they tried to trade for Paul George. Then they tried to trade for Lowry Markin. And this is a team that's got an itchy trigger finger trying to make a big deal. All of these players' value are increasing as this happens. Now, they may not want to touch what they've got going, but this team has its draft picks going forward. They have all these guys. They've lowered their payroll by $50 million. I mean, that's one of the stories. of the. 
They got, they're getting more production. Yeah, Yeah. sorry. No, 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 no. I wanted you to finish your thought there, but I'm just curious. Do you know anyone that they have their eye on? Mm. I I know that's what the next question is going to be. Let's just wait and see. I think they don't feel the pressure to do that. I just know that it's something that they've kicked around. So they're a team that not only has so much going for them right now, they have what's needed to potentially make a trade later. And I'll just bring up Buddy Heald. Uh, uh, Jason brought up Buddy Heald. Buddy Heald is making $30 million, actually more than that, like $33 million less than and, uh, Clay Thompson did last year. And he has basically been a better player. He is shooting a higher percentage on the same volume of three-point shots. Now, is that going to hold up? Probably not. But even if he just, even if he regresses a little bit, th- th- they're getting so much production out of him at so much less cost. Yeah. It's just an an indication of how much more dynamic this roster is now than they were a year ago. And Buddy Hill is thrilled to be there. He's happy to be a warrior. Clay was in a a miserable mood a lot of last season. Yeah, so right now that's working out for them, but we got to stay tuned on that and see if it continues. All right, around the world. The Warriors only took 34 threes. So they knew that the Celtics were going to take it away. They got into the paint first and foremost. So this was not a typical Warrior game, but to win a game like this on the road, uh, after getting down early 11, right? And then the Celtics made that furious comeback in the third where they scored 41, regrouped in the fourth, and really took this game for the Celtics. Uh, I thought this whole game changed as soon as the bench came in. To start the game, the starters had a slow start. Derek White hit some big threes to start this game. Seemed like the momentum was going Boston's way. But the bench came in. This is Gary Payton the second. This is Buddy Hill. Buddy Hill hits shots. GP2 gets steals. They got off and running. They took charge of this game. It just felt like the Warriors' momentum was always on their side. And it did a great job. Andrew Wiggins, Jonathan Kaminga did a great job in the first half on Jason Tatum. That is the head of this team of the Boston Celtics. He's been averaging 30 points a game. He ended up getting his 30 points but it came after a long battle tonight on the defensive end. And I just thought defensive, the Warriors dictated where those shots were coming from. As you said, Festus, there were spurts from each player, but they never got a rhythm. Derek White got off to a great start. Tatum had nothing. Tatum had a great third quarter, but they never put it together. And I thought the Warriors' defense, we saw a lot of times they were double, uh, double teaming at half court. You know, just, just taking them out of their rhythm in, in the half court. And that's mainly because Jalen Brown and Przingis are not there. So you're talking about bench players that you, you, you're going to have them beat you as opposed to Tatum and Derek White. Tatum, 17 of his 30, came in that third quarter when Boston scored 41. But to your point, Fezzi, they did a great job collectively on Jason Tatum, whether it was J.K., Andrew Wiggins, Dre by that time, great win here. But Stephen Curry, he only had six at the half, and yet the Warriors were up at the half. They finished the first half. Really get going. You got to also remember, Steph is just coming back from an injury. That's what's insane. Look at these numbers. Seven for seven for the free throw line, four for nine from three. Steph Curry, 27 points after coming back from an injury. Man, this guy is special. He's climbing up the ladder here, Bully. 30th all-time in NBA history. Bye-bye, Charles. Sports. <laughs> but tonight, I think the most, most encouraging Encouraging thing, he played 34, 35 minutes, was moving dynamically, was playing off the dribble, was playing off the basketball. I thought he played great defense. Uh, but Bonte, we talked about this pregame. Steph doesn't have to explode the entire game because everyone's contributing. Mm-hmm. I think he loves this, this style where everyone's contributing. Uh, you got the strength in numbers. And the defense, I'm not going to say they, they relax on him, but they're not doubling him as much. You saw that back cut. Drew Holiday fell asleep, tried to go over the top on him. He got that layup. So I think the fact that there's so many people contributing, Steph can pick his spots. He's always going to be efficient. Just a beautiful, we had 27, 9, and 7. Yeah, 21 in the second half. Just a great game. Great game overall for the Golden State Warriors. A great team game. Kevon Looney. And look at this, Dalton Johnson. This is the first time the Warriors have won five consecutive pro games to start a season. Uh-oh. Since the 73 Uh-oh. win That's, season. That number's out there now. Uh-oh. Stephen Curry's stunning performance in the Warriors' victory was due to an often overlooked element. Steph returned to his best form against the Celtics. Less than two weeks ago, Golden State Warriors star Stephen Curry left the court limping and headed straight to the locker room during the fourth quarter against the LA Clippers. There was collective concern after that game. Not only had the Warriors suffered their first loss of the season in their home opener, but there were also fears for Curry, who had twisted his ankle twice in the second half. Fast forward to now, and things couldn't be better for Golden State. Since then, they've won five straight games, the latest led by a brilliant Curry performance in a statement win over the reigning champion Boston Celtics on Wednesday. Stephen Curry's conditioning is an often underestimated element of the Warriors' stars game. In his second game back after a three-game absence, 
Curry scored 27 points, grabbed 7 rebounds, and handed out 9 assists on 8 for 17 shooting from the field and 4 for 9 from 3-point range. The two-time MVP scored 10 points, pulled down to rebounds, dished out to assists, recorded a steal, and blocked a shot in the final 8 minutes, helping his team finish with a 30-17 run to overturn a 7-point deficit and win by 6 points. Curry was so good, it's hard to believe that the injury against the Clippers happened just 10 days ago. At the time, there was concern that the 36-year-old might miss several weeks, especially given his history of ankle issues. Perhaps this worked in his favor, combined with his often underestimated physical conditioning, to ensure that his absence was not only brief, but that he barely missed a beat upon returning. Curry had a minutes restriction against the Washington Wizards on Monday, playing 20 for minutes, during which he scored a game-high 20 for points, along with three rebounds and six assists in the 125-112 victory. This minutes restriction was immediately lifted against the Celtics, with Curry playing over 30 for minutes three more than any teammate. This proved even more crucial as backup guard Brandon Pajimski was out due to illness after leaving Monday's game during the third quarter. Although we shouldn't be surprised after all these years, Curry's ability to defy physical concerns is an underrated aspect of his excellence. While others in their early 30s see a sharp decline in physical capabilities and overall performance, all-time greats like Curry and LeBron James continue to rewrite what's possible in defying father time.